folks, we're looking at Toronto real estate all wrong. I'll get into that and then the latest home prices and insights for the city of Toronto for week ending April 17, 2024. Not long ago, I was helping this elderly couple. They called me because they wanted to buy a condo as an investment property. So I meet them at their house and they lived in a, 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 a modest, I'll say a, a modest bungalow. It was by no means this huge, monstrous, square footage, you know, luxury house. It was a modest, it was nice, but a modest, simple bungalow in Etobicoke. And I met them there and we're talking about buying a condo for an investment. And they just wanted a, you know, simple condo, nothing, you know, in the million dollar range. They were looking at 600,000 or so. And their whole plan was to rent that out. And so I talked to them about, you know, budgeting and their, their, their pre-approval and have they been through that process yet? And they said, oh no, we don't need a bank. We don't need a loan. We're going to pay cash. So I immediately thought, oh, so maybe they're pulling equity out of their home to be able to buy this in cash. So I started the, the conversation headed down that way. And they quickly stopped me there and said, no, no, no. Our home is paid for. We don't want to have more debt I, again and get a mortgage. And we've been living in this property for a little over 20 years. We've paid off our mortgage and we save and we save and we save. And now we're getting close to retirement. And this condo, the rental on the condo is going to pay for our retirement expenses. It's going to pay for the property taxes on the two properties. It's going to pay for the maintenance fee. It's, it's going to help us to live in our retirement. And I thought, wow, good for you guys. Good for you guys that you can do this. Because I, I got to tell you, the way most people would have looked at real estate, the minute you start to build up some equity, you're thinking, what can I do with it? How many more properties can I buy? How quick can I buy a second property and then a third property? I get calls all the time, almost on a daily basis. I have so much equity now built up. What can I do? What can I buy? Or how... What's the minimum I need in increased value in my property before I can buy a second one? Folks, I, I got to tell you, I meet a lot of people through the course of the day, through the course of my business as a real estate agent. Some people are first time home buyers, scraping together the down payment to buy their first home. I love working with them. And other people are multimillionaires buying big dream homes or multi-investors with multiple properties. And I, I got to tell you, the person that is more relaxed and more calm is the one that owes the less debt, is the one that has less mortgage. I know the plan, the game plan for many people has been to treat real estate like a stock market. And over the last two, three years, we have found out in a lot of ways, homes are like the stock market where it's up and then it's down and you could lose your shirt in the stock market as well as having multiple residential properties. Look, lots of people have made a ton of money in real estate, but not everybody is a savvy investor. For some people, when they call me and they say, look, We've built up so much equity over the last few years. What can we do now? For a lot of those, the answer is nothing. You've been doing so good already in building up equity. Continue down that path. We're not, not everybody is meant to have multiple properties, deal with tenants, juggle finances back and forth, just build up the, next, the nest egg, build up the equity. If you've managed to get this much equity, focus on getting more equity. That's where the financial freedom comes from. The bank will always have their claws in you. And it's not like you even own your home. If you have a mortgage, the bank really owns your home. You're just renting it from the bank. Now they've introduced for first time home buyers, 
uh, amortization instead of 25 goes to 30 years and they're just it, it's it's one step more towards normalizing mortgage that for life you're going to have a mortgage and it never used to be like that years ago it was never like that but that's how it is for many years now and some people have realized that they're going to have a mortgage for the rest of their life but you know others they don't think that way they want to eliminate the mortgage they want to focus on paying off their mortgage and when you think about it mortgage payments that is for most people the single largest expense of your disposable income can you imagine what your life would be like if there was no mortgage payment if you did not owe the bank any money or it was just a small small mortgage you might find you feel way better about your life and you're in position to deal with emergencies in your life way better than a person that's got two, three, and four properties and has high mortgages on each one and is biting their nails every night and losing sleep because they're not sure what they're going to do if one thing goes sideways and doesn't work out. They're not sure how they're going to pay these bills. If you think this video, this, if you think this video can help somebody you know, pass it along. If you get value from what we're talking about, subscribe. If you want to speak with me about your real estate situation, it's really simple. Up here, there's a link to my calendar. Below this video in the description, there's a link to my calendar. Click on that, book a time that's convenient for you, and we'll talk about whatever's on your mind. Now, let's get into the numbers. Folks, as we do every year, I show my support for the Leafs. Go Leafs go. At the time of filming this, the series against Boston is tied at one apiece. Even Steven, we're going forward from here. So go Leafs go. This report is dealing with the city of Toronto only. We are focused on the freehold properties. The, the, I've got on the board here, average sold price for detached semis and towns. But I've put, I, I do have condos up here. We're not talking about condos today. That's a whole separate video that we do tomorrow. But today you're watching Freehold. But the difference, that's why I have condos here. The spread and average sold price from 748 to 1856, that's over $1.1 million spread between the average condo price and the average detached price for the city of Toronto. That's a huge spread. We're gonna start off with the detached market. For week ending April 17th, 177 detached properties were sold across the city of Toronto. This is just the city of Toronto. There's no Mississauga, Brampton, uh, York Region, Durham. No, it's just the city of Toronto, detached properties. So 177 were sold, a little bit less than the previous week, but overall, I would say Sales are trending upwards, uh, although we are a little bit less from the previous week. We have fewer sales, but not much. But look at the amount of property selling at $2 million or more. For a week ending August, uh, April 17th, 54 properties sold at $2 million or more. That's 31% of all properties sold. I'm saying this and I'm stressing that's almost a third of all properties sold in the city of Toronto, detached properties sold at $2 million or more. Previous week, 25% sold at $2 million or more. The week before that, 21% sold at $2 million or more. So over the last few weeks, the percentage of properties at $2 million or more is growing. Well, you can't help it if the percentage of properties selling at $2 million or more is growing, so is average sold price. We're now sitting at 1856000 Average sold price has been climbing for, for a while now. Compared to last year, 1856, 1856 seems like a huge number. And it is. It's a big number. But it's only 3% higher than where we were this time last year. The median price is 2% higher year over year. The dotted line, that's a four-week moving average. 
And you can see the dotted line, the four week moving average also trending up for average price and for median price. 177 were sold, 58% sold at list price or more. The percentage selling at list price or more, if we go back say two, two and a half months, I would say it's kind of steady, but it's steady, you know, at 50% or more. It's not steady at 25%. So there's quite a few selling each week, uh, a high percentage selling at list price or more. Listings. Here's what we need to keep an eye on. 409 were listings listed. So listings jumped way up from what we've seen over the previous weeks. Active listings jumped up quite a bit also, now sitting at 1,373,000. Months of inventory climbed up a little bit, now sitting at 1.8 months of inventory. Still a seller's market, but it's climbing up there. This is Toronto broken down into nine different sections. And if we say all Toronto sitting at 1.8, if you're in the market, if you're buying and you're looking at different neighborhoods, you're going to have a totally different buying experience in some of the different pockets of the city. If you're selling and buying, you're going to experience one thing selling. And if you're buying somewhere else, you're going to experience a totally different market. For example, all of Toronto's 1.8 months of inventory, 58% sold at list price or more. A little bit more competitive in Scarborough where months of inventory is 1.1 and 77% of the properties are selling at list price or more. So here's the experience in Scarborough. Just about every property listed is going to have an offer date. So if your plan is I'm not participating on any offer night, you're probably not buying in Scarborough. Almost every property is going to have an offer night pricing strategy. Riverdale beaches, 26 properties were sold, 62% sold at list price or more. 0.9% 0 0.9 is the months of inventory. Extremely sell, extreme sellers market, extremely competitive. Then you go to some other areas. Rexdale sitting at 2.6. Look right here in the middle here. Yorkdale, Rosedale, the average sold price is over $3 million. The average sold price 48%, so close to half are selling at list price or more. Months of inventory sitting at 2.3. So it's a little bit higher than the overall city average, but 2.3 is by no means a buyer's market or a balanced market. It's at the top end of a seller's market. Anyways, that's City of Toronto broken down into nine different sections. Let's take a close look at semi-detached. 52 semis were sold. 14 of those sold at $1.5 million or more. Average sold price is $1,296,000. The last few weeks, average sold price, a little bit at a time, has been decreasing. But if I kind of, it, it's difficult to read. I mean, average sold price was trending upwards over January to February. And, and now it seems maybe it's been kind of flat, although weekly basis it goes up and down, but it seems kind of flat over the last two months. Compared to last year, 1296 is 9% lower. The median price is 6% higher year over year. And if we look at the dotted line, the four week moving average, both for median and average price, it does kind of look flat, doesn't it? So that's why I got the line there. It, it looks like there hasn't been a lot of change over the last two months or so with average prices. Months of inventory sitting at 1.2, and 69% of the semi-detached are sold, sold at list price or more. It's quite competitive, the semi-detached market. Townhouses, 24 freehold townhouses were sold. Five of those were at $1.5 million or more. Average sold price took a big drop to 1,213. This happens when you're dealing with weekly data the way I am. But overall, prices have been trending up for, for many weeks when it comes to townhouses. One, two, one, three is 9% lower year over year. The median price is 12% lower. And months of inventory did come down to 1.2 months of inventory. 
50%, half of these townhouses sold at list price or more. Here's a quick summary. We're pretty much in a seller's market when it comes to detached semis, towns, condos that we're not talking about. That's tomorrow's show. It's a whole different market, a whole different, whole different situation when we're talking about condos, but we're not talking about condos. So very much a seller's market. There will be some pockets that you may experience a buyer's market, but it's not, it's not a buyer's market because there is such a surplus of inventory and the, the properties overall are sitting there. It's a buyer's market, you, you may think, because the property is just priced wrong. It's just sitting there. The seller's, I guess, expectations are too high or, or something, but the property is just sitting there. But if the property is priced properly and marketed properly, you're going to get the sale that you want and buyers are buying. We're seeing it. There's properties being sold in one day, two days, three days. Properties being sold two thirds, you know, 75% are selling at list price or more in some areas. So that's the situation. That's the market for Toronto Freehold. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.